everybody. This is Kurt Molly here with my good friend, Rachel LaFay. Hey, I, it's really interesting how we ran into each other. Again, it's one of those deals that you probably heard me talk about if you've watched a bunch of these recordings already. It's somebody that I met through this crazy network and family called Baby Bathwater. And really, it's kind of interesting how we're all kind of connected one way or another. I remember we're sitting outside by this fire because uh, basically outside of this restaurant that we all eat at, we're all outside, we're cold. Somebody makes an introduction. We talk for just a little bit. And then I start looking through profiles and I'm like, oh my goodness, I really have to talk to her. She knows multiple people that I know. She's in some industries that I'm very interested in. I should have asked better questions last time. And then we ran into each other in uh, Baltimore when we were out at another event, um, basically webinar con, which was really quite interesting and sat down at the bar and had a great conversation. You started talking more about your business. And I'm like, what? It's like one of these things that, and I like it's one of these things that is I don't want to say it's 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 easy, but it's simple with processes. And I'm literally rubbing my eyes and I'm like, you're what are you doing again exactly? So since I set up this whole thing, we have a bunch of guest speakers, just some really brilliant people on here with lots of great different ideas. Rachel fits into all of these categories. And I really think that this is something that could be fun and interesting for a lot of people out there. This is one way that I'm going to diversify my income. This is something my girlfriend has been asking me about for a good long time time to say, hey, will you interview Rachel and ask her exactly what she does? Because I'm very, 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 very interested in this whole thing. So I wanted to bring Rachel in here and explain exactly what she does and how she does it. And I just want to say thanks for doing an interview. Thank you very, very much. Thanks for having me. I think it's going to be really fun. Yeah, it's be great. So what is this thing that I allude to that you work on that's rather simple but a fun idea? What's the easiest way to explain this? The easiest way to explain it is... Um, Basically, I just teach people how to create super simple text-based designs in like, you know, a few seconds, put them on pictures of blank products, like a blank mug, blank poster, shirt, whatever, and then sell it on Amazon, Etsy, and eBay without actually having to buy any inventory or pay for anything up front. You get to just create these products out of thin air, sell them, and then you only ever have to make them after somebody buys them. Mm, so what was one of the ones that you did? What was the Baker one? Just a fun saying. The punch me in the face. Oh, um, dear mom. I think so. This so there's a whole bunch of them. one of them is like, dear mom, thanks for being my mom. If I had another mom, I'd punch her in the face and go find you. Love your favorite. <laughs> <laughs> so some of these are just sayings that you come up with, that you research, that you're like, hey, let's just slap it on a mug. How does that happen? It's all of it, really. So sometimes I'll just be like. Maybe I'll see a bumper sticker and I'll be like, oh, this is a kind of cool idea. Or sometimes I'll see cool shirts and I'll think, let's see how we can kind of put this into a niche form or something. Because the thing is, most of the designs that I have, I usually try to take like one saying and then apply it to lots of different niches so I can get lots of products out there. Um, so for example, the dear mom one, dear grandma, dear papa, dear, you know, and then all these different things. It makes lots of different ways for us to sell. Um, so I'm usually kind of looking for formula kind of things. And sometimes I'll just, the way that this got started was I just wanted kind of like, I wanted to do something fun and creative. And I would just lay in bed and like think of fun kind of like t-shirt ideas or like saying, mm -hmm. and I would just quickly pull out my iPhone and um, there's an app called Word Swag. It's like a $5 fee one time. And I'd make these little sayings and just throw them on the products and it just started taking off. So it's just, I don't know, just fun, you know, good outlet. I, I, I wanted to lead in with this and then we'll lead in with your story in here in a second. But like, here's what I was amazed on is exactly what you just said. This is what you said at the bar, right? So got a blank mug. Great. Come across some saying and you're like, oh, hey, if I had another mom, you know, I want to punch her in the face and blah, blah. Okay. Well, that's kind of interesting. You slap it on the side of here and you put it up in these three different sites that you mentioned before. You don't physically have to own any product until someone buys it. And then you literally said the same thing here too. You're like, well, then you can start diversifying because it's mom, aunt, sister, cousin. And I'm like, now all of a sudden you have one saying, there are five sayings. And I'm like, oh, so you do mugs, t-shirts, hats, keychains. A lot of it just mugs. <laughs> I'm just like, this is brilliant. So let's go ahead and step back a little bit because the times are really interesting. This interview will run for 2020. How did you get on the online world in the first place? In the first, so I was thinking about this. I actually started on eBay in like 1997. So forever Whoa. ago. Yeah, I was um, selling clothing back then. I'd go to thrift stores and then find like these high-end brand names and stuff. And then I would go and reflip them on eBay. So I was doing that for a while. And I did that from like 97 
there, I guess, to around 2006. And then, yeah. people, but like dabbling. Were you employed then and this was part-time? Was this your full-time income? Yeah, I never even considered it as like what I was like marketing until I was thinking, how long have I been kind of like playing around? Mm. And then um, 2006, I was I had worked my way up to retail manager and um, it was just the worst. So I um, came across one of these affiliate eBooks on Craigslist. It's basically like, I didn't know it was an affiliate thing. It's like, make a million dollars in your underwear while you're sleeping, it'll be great. And the whole thing was like, promote this ebook, you'll get a commission, spam Craigslist, and you'll make lots of money, which... <laughs> spam Craigslist. I've seen that, this before. Yeah. 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 And this was before Craigslist had like flags or anything like this. Yeah. And, well, they flagged, but it was very different. So I'm not proud of it now. But at the time, I mean, I was making $500 to $800 a day every day, like my first day onwards for months. Wow. I was just like, this is the life. And so I quit my job back in 2000. So full time, I came full time 2006, June 2006. And then just did a bunch of things since then, like create courses. I had an outsourcing company with like 120 people that I don't have anymore, thankfully. Um, copywriting and selling on Amazon and teaching a lot of marketing along the way. So it's been a while. One of the reasons I wanted to do this, well, there's lots of different selfish reasons I wanted to do this summit, but I knew a bunch of friends were going to be at home. I knew that a bunch of people had a bunch of different ideas that I could ask just a bunch of questions on, just because really there's a lot of people who are sitting here essentially. And there's really two different types of people, of course, who's like, hey, who, uh, everything, like who moved my cheese? I talk about this in almost every single call, right? It's either, hey, I'm going to sit here and everything's going to be the same or, oh my goodness, things are different and I have to make some adaptation and change. And a lot of this is, is a lot of people just don't know their options or what their options are. So again, I go back to when we were sitting at the bar and you're explaining to me the business and stuff like that. I'm like, it's so, again, I don't want to say simple because you have processes, but like, just to kind of lay in bed and kind of come up with some sayings or see some bumper stickers or search online. You're not dealing with clients. You're not having to order a whole bunch of inventory or go to China to kind of figure out how to put everything together. And I'm just like, I just want to tell more and more people this story. I really, really, really like this. And I started thinking about other ways to adapt this to my business. So how, so you basically, I'm trying to kind of think, I, I, how, how did you put this all together then? So you kind of had the sayings, in the cups and some people understand what drop shipping is but like how how did you intertwine this whole thing to make exactly i'll give out a link here in a second to make a program and a process how the whole thing happen so i had been dabbling with um trying to sell things on amazon before i had been selling like wooden easels on amazon i got um and i was making i don't know a couple thousand dollars a month or something on it and at the same time my fiance had a pit bull page, a Facebook pit bull page, mm -hmm. <laughs> and he sold some pit bull product. This was in like the Teespring days. Yeah. And, um, and so I took the design he had on a shirt, put it on a mug, and it was making like a few hundred dollars to a few thousand dollars pretty quickly a month. And then I said, let me try more. And so I put on more sayings and more sayings. And then it just scaled up to, I think I made like 500K last year on, on just mugs on Amazon. And then, you know, Etsy and eBay too, but Amazon's my biggest one. Um, yeah. And they're not all like them. violent sayings. <laughs> I led with the punch mom one, but <laughs> there's a lot of just like super simple sayings, like even if it's just best baker ever or something like that. And the whole thing is, by the way, it's like, I think this is kind of the, the big part of it is like with the low hanging system, that's the name of like the system is um, you're going after what people are saying they want to purchase, right? So you're not having to go and be like, you should buy this. Someone's actively typing in funny mom gift or funny gift for Baker or whatever. And then you're giving it to them. So it makes it a little bit easier versus like trying to explain to them why they should buy whatever it is that you're selling. It is interesting because I've, I've sat around the table with other people. It was actually at a baby bathwater event. It was mutual friend, Michael Lovich and myself. And there were seven other people from Amazon that were sitting around and we're like, okay, so uh, just kind of curious, I know that you sell on Amazon, but like you have this click funnels that you can follow up with people back, right? And like you can email them and then take them back over this landing page where you can retarget and you do some direct mail and you, and literally all the people around the table had all made seven figures a month at one time or another. And they're like, um, no, uh, <laughs> we run some Amazon ads. Like we put in a dollar, make six. And someone's like, oh, we put in a dollar, make four. And I'm not saying this is what all Amazon ads are. But everyone just kind of looks at Michael and I and they're like, I mean, you guys just overcomplicate it. And I'm like, overcomplicate it? <laughs> Wait a minute, you put things on Amazon and then people find you on Amazon. 
and then they buy and you don't, I'm not saying you don't have to do all that other stuff, but actually we way overcomplicate it versus again, when you show me the mugs to put up the mugs and you're like, Hey, I just keep on putting out more product. And if one takes off or two or 10, so once you put one up there, it's up there forever until you take it down. Right. And you just basically, you're just building in virtual inventory until people find out what fits for that. Does that sound right? Exactly. Yeah. I am curious because I was talking to one of our other interviews, Keith Baxter, he watches Google trends a lot. He's an SEO person who just loves kind of watching trends. Do you come up with sayings because you feel inspired? Are you looking at trends like in the news on Google and stuff like that? Or how do you, how are those brilliant so, ideas? Now? I, I don't really look at trends because I mean, sometimes for fun, I say like 80 to 90% of the listings are just going after what people are going to normally type in. And then sometimes I'll look for, if I'm just like trying to have fun or something, but um, usually no, because it's, it's very, this is my third business in terms of like, I have a warehouse, I have my information marketing, so I don't get to put that much time in this, like not even a couple hours a week, some weeks, some months, I don't touch it really. So um, yeah, yeah, it's very much a passive kind of income play for me. So the, the trends thing would be fun if I had more time in my life. I was saying before this, the warehouse eats up so much of my time, um, yeah. but mostly it's just like, what would people type in looking for gifts, right? So like funny gift for blank or funny mug for blank. Like people are searching these things on an ongoing basis. Like I have one mug um, for Father's Day. I sold it and it was like, you're the luckiest dad in the world. I'd love to have me as a kid or something like that. Or I'd love to have me as a daughter. And then I'd love to have me as a son. And so it just took off for Father's Day, which is great. But then it still sells year round for like birthdays and just because presents and things like that. And so I love to have things like that that will sell year round because it is a passive income play. I don't want to have to work hard and constantly look at new trends and stuff. I mean, we do have people that do. Uh, we had one person during the elections in 2016 um, had some kind of mug. I don't remember who it was for or against, but she made like $10,000 in like a day just, you know, selling one of those. So it works if you want to put more time into it. It just kind of depends on where you're coming from. It's so good. It's always interesting when I talk to entrepreneurs like, oh, I kind of had the side business that I was figuring out and then I figured, oh, I kind of create another business around it. Then I already have this other business anyway and it's kind of sitting <laughs> off over to the side. And Sorry, my life. <laughs> this, this is great. So, well, let me kind of, I'm going to go, kind of go back just a little bit. So from the different people who were watching this, there's three different levels, people who are beginners, we're just binge watching a lot of stuff, really looking for opportunity right now. So let's talk about that. So what kind of experience, technical requirements do you, do you oh, by the way, I have it. I'm so excited to ask you all these questions. By the way, the belt.live forward slash Rachel, the belt.live forward slash Rachel, you'll see the link appear on your screen multiple times. But uh, again, to go back to those beginners, what kind of technical skills are you required? What kind of shipping skills are required? What kind of art skills are required to get started on this whole thing? So here's the thing. Well, a couple of things. Number one, speaking of webinar con, did you meet Robert there, Robert Posey? Yes. Yes. So his daughter, I think, is 11. She's go she's going to do it. We have a lot of kids that do this. Ooh. Yeah, you don't oh, need really? to have any. We have kids. We have grandparents. We have lots of, like, you don't need any skills. The thing is, you're coming up with these designs that take seconds, right? So for that link, it's going to show you probably the replay of how I, like, come up with the designs and all that. Super simple. So very easy to do that. For the, then you just put it on a picture of a product. You don't have to actually do any shipping or anything yourself. So you link in with another company that every time, you could choose the company, but I tell you the one that I recommend. Um, you could press a button, have it so that your products get listed on Amazon, Etsy, eBay. Every time you make the sale, the order information gets sent back, gets shipped from within the United States on your behalf, tracking numbers get automated all this stuff. So you don't have to deal with any of the like China, you know, wait months for things. You don't have to make anything. You don't need to ship anything yourself. Literally, you're coming up with fun designs. You're popping them on mugs. You're pressing a button and you're moving to the next one. I mean, there's a little more like, but mostly that's it. It's a super, I call it low hanging system because it's chill. It's easy. We've got lots of people. Everyone wants to buy it for like their wives or girlfriends or kids for people that don't classify necessarily themselves as entrepreneurs, but they see how simple it is for them to make extra money and they do it. They do a good, a lot of people do well. Mm, I mean, that's, that's a big aha for me because what I hear you saying is when you kind of got started before you're like, well, in eBay, Hey, I was just kind of putting stuff together. I didn't even know I was marketing or doing any of that stuff. So it's interesting because I've talked to a lot of other entrepreneurs and when we use that label, there are a lot of people who don't identify with an entrepreneur necessarily. I know 
you just actually, it's a great, uh, same thing with my girlfriend. She wouldn't say necessarily she's an entrepreneur, but she sets her own schedule. She decides the things that she wants to do. She'd love to do something like this, but just by going around and saying, hey, you want to be an entrepreneur and try this? But you're right. Like a lot of, a lot of side income, if they make an extra 250 or $500 a month, that's huge. To be able to put in mugs that just kind of sit there, one person may buy this or two or 10 or 15, that gets exciting. I remember I talked to a guy named Vic Johnson. This is many, many years ago. Vic is in the um, uh, motivational niche, spiritual niche, and he talks, he writes a lot of books. And I go, why do you write so many books? I go, books don't make a lot of money. And he goes, actually, I want to create a legacy. And I'm like, well, what do you mean by that? And he goes, well, he goes, if you buy like Think and Grow Rich, his family still gets paid on it. Yeah. Well, if I employ four or five of my family members and we just continually write books, we literally have thousands of books out there that people will buy throughout time and funds our family for a good long time. Mm -hmm. And it reminded me kind of of this, of like, wow, you could really kind of sit around, come up with some fun ideas, put some stuff up, see what sells, see what doesn't, but you're not focused on what's the selling mechanism. How am I using the page? What's my webinar? What's my BSL? You're just coming up with some fun stuff that you put online. This is great. Okay. Intermediate people who are watching this, maybe diversifying their income. So what does this kind of look like? Like how many, you said you use this passively. Let's just say you were, someone was going to dedicate five or 10 hours a week. What do you think they could do to diversify their business with something like this? I mean, there's multiple things, right? So one is um, whatever niche they're in, they could sell products around that. You know, we have people that um, they could also just like make ad if they know how to run ads. Usually I tell people, especially beginners, don't touch ads. I don't touch ads. I don't understand them. But I do know some intermediate and more expert people that do ads and make a lot of money with like once they get, they'll take the mugs, they'll put it on Amazon. If they see something's taking off, they'll run ads and they can do really well with that and then put it on other products. Yeah. So that can, that can do really well too. I mean, sometimes people will see a product taking well, um, doing well, and then they'll buy inventory and send it to Amazon. Because right now you don't have to buy the inventory, but people sometimes if they want to scale up, pre-send inventory to Amazon, they can do that. But that's, you know, later on, you don't, you certainly don't need to do it to start. See, what's interesting, what I hear you, what I hear you saying is, and this kind of goes for intermediate to expert. So I also train a lot of uh, agency owners. And right now, a lot of people are talking about diversification. So this video will run for 2020. Uh, downtown Austin's boarded up, right? It's just a little crazy outside. And a lot of us are kind of stuck inside. And what happens is, is I just did a video on this. There's a lot of businesses that are stopping advertising. The ad cost right now is 30 to 40% lower. A lot of people are scared, but us as consumers, we're still buying. People are still going to buy mugs for their mother and stuff like that. So what's interesting is, as, as some people are stuck, some e-commerce businesses, because they can't ship out of China or they physically can't move stuff, have stopped their ads. So some agency owners are like, oh my goodness, my e-commerce business has just gone down. Well, I've been interviewing other people who are in affiliate marketing and that's why I love this idea. If you're at home and you've lost a couple of clients, like this is a great way that you know how to run ads, you know how sales work, you know how to do some of the research, you have extra time on your hands, Again, this kind of goes in that category of people just don't know what they don't know. Like apply all of your skills to something like this to diversify income while you wait for things to turn around. I think that's such a good point. I've had a couple of friends um, on that Marco Polo app, She's like sitting here watching your training, like so excited of using this downtime to make some more money. I think it's a good, I think it's a good idea. You're creating assets. And like, to speak to your point about before, when I first started marketing, someone said like the amount of money that you make online is correlated to how many buy buttons you have out there. Like how many opportunities there are for people. To oh, that's them. good. Right. And so when you're able to create these mugs and designs in seconds, really, I mean, let like seconds think of all the buy buttons all the opportunity for people to buy from you well here's the other thing hmm. just like even if all these economy things are, are right and we're going to go into a recession or i guess we're technically in a recession people will be looking for cheaper gifts now more than ever right because people will still buy for mother's day yeah. father's day all the holidays so now you can get them thoughtful gifts without having to spend a lot of money so i think it's just going to go up this is great this is really, really, so uh, yeah, I mean, I completely agree. They're just, it's funny because my mind is just racing. There's a ton of different uses, obviously, that can go on here. I kind of even think about my own brand and I'm like, yeah, I have like this hat right here that I give to some of our customers, but it's a cheesy, funny saying that people have come up to me and they're like, hey, I really love that saying. That's something that I could slap onto a mug to diversify a little bit. 
which is interesting. But I want to go back to something else that you said that was just absolutely just brilliant is for someone who creates digital products like myself, I only have a couple of buy buttons, but I have to have these webinars and these VSLs and these long things to really explain this. But what you're talking about is putting up a design, creating a buy button for that one cup. If you have 500 cups, you have 500 buy buttons. And what gets me excited about that is uh, there's a story that I heard once someone walks up to Jeff Bezos and says, oh, hey, it's great selling books. And he's like, selling books? No, I want to control the entire checkout process. And his checkout process is one of the best in the world with high conversion. So now there's 500 buttons out there with the person who loves the checkout process that controls that. And they spend millions of dollars on optimization. Oh my goodness, my eyes lit up when you're like 500 buy buttons. I'm like, this is, this is great. This is really great. <laughs> Um, okay, this really covers a lot and I really, really appreciate it. Again, you'll see a link multiple times here on the screen. Basically, what you're gonna see is you click on the link, you'll see a webinar, how the whole thing's done. It's really quite simple um, and the processes are proven. You can, you can see this online. So, well, let me ask you this. 2020, uh, kind of round this whole thing out because this is, it's so simple. I just want to get started and I actually want to just go tell my girlfriend about it here in just a minute as well too, as soon as we're done with the interview. There's usually lots of other questions that I have, but like my mind's just racing with a bunch of these ideas. These are really great. So what are some of the things that you're working on in 2020, right? As you're kind of stuck at home and, and kind of hunkering down, what are some of the things that you're focused on that you're looking at? Um, I mean, I'm ramping up Low Hanging System even more. Um, I mentioned this is the third business, this thing that Low Hanging System, my warehouse is now, we're still running actually. People took work from home and we're doing whatever we can to keep operations going. But I really want to just double down on getting this out to more people because I know how life changing it's going to be. Um, diversifying a bit more, excited for when um, stocks go down more, you know, go in. <laughs> put in more. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd say those are the big things. So j just an idea for you, because you've kind of mentioned this before. Um, do you like doing, are you open to doing Facebook lives at all? Do you like Facebook lives? Yeah, I d I've done a couple since this quarantine. I started them actually. Tell me doing more. Doing a Facebook live right now, talking about what you're doing with your course for 15 to 20 minutes. Essentially what would happen and say, hey, this is a great project for your kids. Kid projects are flying mm -hmm. off the shelf right now. So what happens is, is uh, and again, I'll make sure that you have access to the belt, right? One of the things is, is we like running long form videos. So for instance, I did a Facebook Live last night talking about why not to stop ads, how we're having the stuck at home summit. And I think it's 15 minutes long that I ended up recording this. So just kind of imagine you can just be like, hey parents, if you're looking for something fun to do with your kids and just kind of show them a design, but spend 15 or 20 minutes, you can run these ads and people will watch for 15 or 20 minutes for 30 or 40 cents. So it doesn't take much for 30 or 40 cents to add up. People will be like, oh my goodness, this is a great idea. Set up just a little bit of retargeting if they watch this. But most people will say this, they're like, Rachel, I don't know how I found you, but it's almost like I was praying to God because literally I'm scrolling through my newsfeed thinking, what am I going to have for my kids to do? What can we do on a Saturday? And all of a sudden I saw this Facebook Live that came up. It's the replay. 99% of people will see the replay. That's what you run ads to, right? And people are like, it's this great idea. So if you're doing like some over the shoulder videos of, hey, I just want to show you a design that maybe you can show your girlfriend or your wife. Hey, I just want to show you some designs that maybe you can show your kids to do. Hey, I just want to show you a couple of things. If you are stuck at home and you're kind of bored, let me just give you a couple of things. I'd be cranking out some of those Facebook lives, turning them into ads. They'd def I will take your Facebook lives and run them to this link when we're done with our interview too. But Thank that would you be my, so much. Yeah, that that's a great sense. idea. Yeah, child, child projects with children right now are just flying off the shelf. I'm writing that down. That's a really especially at this price. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, now I'm really excited. I want to check the email I know that you sent me that I hadn't had a chance to look at, so I can access the program and get inside of it. Like, um, uh, seriously, I'm dumbfounded because it's it's I just I do I just want to access this. Is there anything else that you want to give for advice out there to anybody who's considering look at this again? There's a lot of people binge watching. I'm so excited I want to run in the other room, but do you have any advice for those people who are kind of sitting here thinking about what to do next? Um, I mean, I guess just focusing on anything would be great. I think with this particular model, the thing that's so fun is that you don't have to have like mega focus, like you create lots of different designs, you know, so it's not like, I don't know, but overall, I would say, I keep thinking about how, have you heard about how Isaac Newton, when he was quarantined, it was like the most productive period of his life? self-quarantine. Oh, I heard that story. 
Yeah, he discovered all these major things during this period. And so um, I just think there's so much opportunity now while we're here, you know, to really make change and just make amazing things happen. So I'm I mean, I'm hearing simple ideas, having lots of buy buttons out there, being able to push button out to three different platforms, people buying gifts from Amazon that ship to their house, lower price gifts. That's why I said I'm kind of dumbfounded because I'm just like, I want to get started. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> it's really great. So again, the belt.live forward slash Rachel, you'll see that all over here. I'll make a little promo video for you. I'll send it out to you. I'll make sure that I give you access to the belt. This is, I'm very, very excited. You guys will all see belt propaganda that will be on Amazon here shortly. I'm very excited to do this. This is great. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks for being up early to see this. Thank you very, very, very much. I really appreciate you. I can't wait to see you at the next event, right, baby bathwater. Ditto. Thanks for having me. Take care. All right, bye. Bye.